Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today you're gonna learn something and it's the basic schematic of an ESC. Now this portrays 95% of all BL Heli S and some BL Heli 32 ESCs out there. So let's get started here. Now it took a while to get it just right and understand what pin does what and how to read the pins on the assembly code of the BL Heli S, but I finally figured it out and that was a nightmare. I think that was the hardest part of this whole thing here. So there's a couple components that are mandatory for an ESC to work. We have the voltage regulators for the BB2 chip and the FET driver. And then we have the BB2 chip, which is the microcontroller unit, which is the brain of the whole operation. Next, we have a complementary MOSFET driver, which kind of interfaces between the BB2 chip and the MOSFET. And it adds a little functionality here and there. However, this one, I think it actually doesn't. There are some other really nice ones. But the reason why I use this one is because this one was used, is used on basically 90% of all ESCs, from the T-motors to the cheap kikadas to the acons everything this this is just found everywhere so i stuck to this fet driver to make our life just nice and easy and then we also have our mosfets now there's a couple different types of ways to run this uh, however what i chose is to run with two n channel mosfets for each phase one from my understanding and from reading online and from doing my research it's the most efficient and logical one to actually use. So we just stuck to that. So usually some ESCs would need a PNP and an NPN transistor uh, MOSFET. And however, this one is using, the, this schematic is using two N channels. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Two, cha two N channel MOSFETs for each phase here. And um, what else do we have? We have voltage dividers here, which are very simple. What these do is, uh, let's say we just, pass through a phase it's kind of like it's the, it's sensing what phase it's on but you'd create a voltage divider which goes back to the microcontroller unit now if you don't know what a voltage divider it's basically kind of like a voltage regulator it steps down the voltage from 16.8 volts to 3.3 uh, volts because that's what the bb2 chip can actually take here so that's what it does there it just goes to 3.3 uh, volts when it passes by a phase that voltage spike and then it just uh, gives it back here and then the bb2 chip will know which net phase to open next so that's all we're doing here now there's also this one um which is on the other side of the uh the complete voltage divider which is called com i'm calling it com com all common between all uh these are all connected together and they go to one port here i have no idea what it does but we can also see it here comp comp i i just have no clue what it does but i just did that anyways and i've i tested many escs and i found they all do this so i don't know what this is for just yet maybe you know through more research i'll figure that out or if somebody knows let me go down the comment section here we have vs bridge so i'm calling it voltage sense bridge or like you know it's the phase sensing bridge uh there's a couple things connected here so just this is uh what's going on is the voltage is coming back from the motor here and then going through the voltage divider to the, the BB2 chip to sense that, oh, it's uh, motor three just passed this phase, for example. Now we need to turn on uh, phase A. And this VS bridge is actually going to two places. We can see that it's going, obviously first, it's going through the voltage divider to MUX-C, and then we can see that it's going directly into the FET driver here also, see VS bridge. And it has this weird little schematic with a diode here that one side is connected to 5 volt and then a capacitor and then it's going to the we could call it the voltage sense as well as you can tell vs sense and they're connected with vb i don't have no idea what the hell it's for because this is in chinese the whole schematic is in chinese so but all of them are connected exactly the same so if you pick up any esc and it has the four tier fd622 which is just about 90 percent of all of them you will see three diodes with three capacitors next to them maybe i'll post a screen a shot up here somewhere so you can kind of see that so yeah you'll see that schematic just about everywhere and that is to sense the uh the phase that it's currently on now the uh, the end channel part or the mosfet part was kind of tricky for me so there's something called dead time and dead time is the time to actually keep both fets off uh before turning on the second one so you don't get a short circuit and that is dictated by a couple things uh for example the fet switching speed the mosfet switching speed and also these resistors here that enable and disable the each fet driver so these play a big role into the dead time now the lower the dead time the faster response you have but the higher chance you have of 
it basically short circuiting because if you don't, for example, these two FETs, just for theoretically, uh, they need 50 milliseconds to completely close, okay, the, the connection. One is connected to VCC, the other one's connected to ground. Now, if we did a 40 millisecond dead time and they take 50 milliseconds to close, then we're going to have a 10 millisecond short and we could possibly fry these out or fry something else out. So that is where the dead time comes in. And that can be changed with these resistor values. For example, this one is for the low MOSFET that's connected to ground. And this resistor value is for the high MOSFET that's connected to VCC or battery voltage, the positive. And uh, you have, we just have to play around with these. So... Um, well, you, it's always safe to start with a really high dead time. That's what I, well, that's what I understand currently. I'll understand more once I connect it to my oscilloscope and then we can see everything. And as you can see, motor A is actually connected. It's kind of um, isolated between the two FETs. It's neither connected to VCC and neither connected to ground. It's just floating right here. This would be one of the pads for one of the wires from the motor. So we could call it phase A. And you see they're not connected anywhere. And the VS bridge is uh, when this when one of these opens, uh, this is how the phase will get transferred back to uh, the voltage divider, which then the BB2 chip reads it. And then, as you can tell, I call it the voltage sense bridge. And it goes back to the FET driver. I don't know why the FET driver needs it if the uh, BB2 chip has it. I have no clue. Maybe it helps it in some sort of a way. Uh, because, and again, this thing is in Chinese. I have no idea what the hell it's saying. And it's not really a comprehensive data sheet, even if it, it was in Chinese. Just It's pretty basic. And just a little of, uh, Google Translate, I didn't really get much info. I just had to reverse engineer everything I had. So there's a little downside with this MOSFET driver. Um, some, uh, you know, some FET drivers, especially like the more expensive ones, they can actually just take the battery voltage. However, this one needs a 5 volt. So we're going to need a 5 volt and we're also going to need a 3.3 volt for the BB2 chip. Um, so we have the 3.3 volt regulator for the BB2 chip. The 5 volt regulator is going to be for the FET driver. Um, I'm, I don't know what I have in the shop, so that's why I left it to do because uh, I just want to see what, what 5 volt little baby SMD um, voltage regulator I have so I can set up its schematic here and then we could put it all together. Now I'm planning on creating a development board here and the development board will have pads broken out for example for the uh, switching of the MOSFETs. So for example, you'll have pads for uh, the low side of one of the phase and the high side. So we can actually watch them switch back and forth and get just more understanding and see how everything is running and play around with the dead time and actually see uh, how, it re how it affects everything until we short it out or we burn it. I think it's really fun. So I'm going to create an ESC and also a development board. The development board is going to be a lot larger, easier to solder to, and it's going to have pads everywhere for just about everything. So we can monitor each phase. Uh, we can, we can do all kinds of crazy cool things. So, but basically the schematic is completely done. All I need is the 5.5 volt, uh, the five volt regulator. And I need to uh, just create the PCB. Here's everything here and just add the development pads. Currently I just have the most basic pads. So we have Phase A, Phase B, you know, the three wires for the motors, the pads for them. We have the two pads for the battery input. We have the three pads for the signal and 5 volt. I might give 5 volt externally. It'll make it just a little bit easier for me. Uh, but yeah, I, that's why I put that there. And then this is to program the BB2 chip. We have the clock, the data, or the RX pad, you know, for, for, the, uh, for the BB2 chip. 3.3 volts because it takes 3.3 volts. And the ground. So if I need to firmware, if I brick it or something, we could easily do that. And the BB2 chip schematic is pretty simple from what I understand. Hopefully I got it right. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure I got this 100% right. As you can tell, VDD, that's going to 3.3 volts. And you need to bypass capacitors. Bypass capacitors is basically you put capacitors as close as possible to the uh, voltage input of a chip in order to keep it smooth. So it doesn't fluctuate the voltage on high load or something. So we just keep it we'll just keep the baby basically the bb2 chip chip running very smoothly here and then uh for the clock what we do is first we have to put a resistor one kilo ohm resistor between a 3.3 volt and the clock pad here so yeah you know, just i guess you have to do that i just saw that in the schematic so i just did what they what they showed in their schematic for the bb2 chip data is where we're going to be uh you know sending the information to flash this guy so overall, I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, the BB2 chip just is controlling uh, six FETs 
and as you can tell the high side and the low side of each one so you know the the first phase of the the, the two fets for the first phase the high and the low and then the second phase so that's a total of six pins here and then we also have another three pins to sense what phase it's on a b and c and then we also have this pin here which gets the sensing from all of them together uh I don't know what that's used for, maybe debugging purposes. If I could read the assembly code, I would have kind of possibly figured something out about that, but I have no idea what that is. And we also have our input, which is the uh, D shot or the PWM input. So it's it turns out to be really simple, and you could actually understand quite a lot more about it. It's, it's actually remarkable how much more I understand ESCs now. I mean, this is just um, this has just been a one week project so far. And I, it's, it's just crazy. So I'd really love to relay all this info to you guys. Now, the schematics are absolutely open and ready for my Patreon. They have exclusivity. It's just a really nice way to give back to them for all their support. And without them, I wouldn't be able to do this. And also a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. And again, if it wasn't for them enabling me to create PCB prototypes as much as I'd like, I wouldn't have been or wouldn't have had the courage to keep going on through with this because it's not a simple and straightforward process sometimes. So go ahead and check them out. They're a really great sponsor. They're the ones that sponsored the F4 open hardware flight control that I've released and now the ESC and as well as the F7, which is coming up next after the uh, the ESC here. So hopefully this makes sense. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. I really hope someone learned something out there today. And uh, if you kind of understand this, you can actually go grab any BL Heli S ESC and actually see everything that I showed you here. Count the resistors. You'll probably find at minimum 16 to 20 resistors. Uh, so the 16, 17 resistors are all right here. You'll see, uh, you, you'll just see it. So it's really cool. Um, just about every single one you grab, you'll just completely understand how it works. And obviously, I'll probably do a later video depending on the views and depending on your request. I will show you this side by side with actual ESC in my hand. I'll actually grab a couple and show you how these things are actually set up. And I think it would make for a pretty interesting video only if you guys are actually interested in that. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And if you could support me on Patreon, that'd be super awesome. I can give you the development boards for anyone who wants. And um, that'd be super great, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.